Hi, welcome everybody to our Algorand Centers of Excellence webinar. This is our second session. We ran one earlier today. And we're so glad you're here. We're excited that so many people are interested in our new program that we launched last Thursday. And um, today we want to introduce the team, go a little bit um, over the program itself, talk logistics and timeline, and answer any questions that you may have. Um, please note that a lot of you submitted questions earlier. We also included some sessions and questions that were included in the earlier session of the webinar. And um, yeah, please feel free to use the questions tab on the right side to add any questions that you would like. Um, my colleague Autumn will also post some polls. So if you want to, you can also respond to those. Um, please also note that um, the deck will be emailed to everyone after, as well as the recording, and um, a recording of today's session will be added to YouTube for future reference. So let's get right into it. Um, this is our Algorand Centers of Excellence team. My name is Dora Anger Lee. I'm the program manager for the program, and I'm your point of contact for any questions that you have, any queries, concerns, comments, um, any questions that are not answered in the FAQ, um, please email us at ace at algorand.foundation. Um, our FAQs are very extensive. They're linked on the ACE program page, so please give that a read as well. Um, Tal Rabin is also on the team, and I would like to hand over to Hugo, who will introduce himself. Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh for coming here and uh, we are very excited to launch this uh, program. Uh, Dora will give you more specific uh, information. Uh, and there is a lot of information in the RFP and in the uh, FAQs that they are published on the website. I just wanted to, <clears throat> to mention some of the principles that we have here. Um, we have a good amount of money uh, to distribute here, and we really want to put it for good use, uh, good use uh, on different levels, uh, from uh, theoretical research to use case applications, and hopefully uh, uh, pushing this uh, area and, and blockchains and cryptocurrencies and their potential for good use. Um, we are very interested in diversity, where well, diversity touches all the elements in the program, from uh, research uh, subjects uh, to people to geographies. We are interested in people collaborating with each other. Uh, for example, we would like to see uh, organizations from one area in the world uh, teaming up with, with another. Um, we the research, as I said, is that uh, we want it to be multidisciplinary, uh, from theory to applications, uh, sociology, anything that you can think that is uh, significant uh, on in the blockchain uh, and cryptocurrency area. We have also a strong stress on education. Uh, we want education at the level of uh, courses, at the level of student involvement, uh, student projects, student activities, campus activities, hackathons, etc. We really want to uh, grow a community of, uh, of blockchain enthusiasts and, 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 uh, and professionals. Uh, the program is not algorithm-centric uh, in the sense that we are interested in all aspects of blockchain, not necessarily those related directly to Algorand, but at the same time, we do uh, expect and we would like to see in the proposals elements that are more specific to Algorand, uh, for example, in the education side and courses on projects that students can do, uh, hackathons that again don't have to be, only, be done only for Algorand, but that, that one will be a part of it. So these are the general uh, principles. Um, they're all we give you more specific information. Okay, thanks, Hugo. Um, as promised, I'll give you a little overview about the foundation. Many of you are um, very well familiar with Algorand. Algorand was founded by MIT professor Sylvia McCauley. He is not only a Turing Award winner, but also a Girdle Prize awardee, RSI Prize winner. Um, he's the co-inventor of probabilistic encryption, zero-knowledge proofs, 
and verifiable random functions, among others. And four things that the um, Algorand protocol is most well known for is um, that it's carbon neutral. It's exceptionally fast and scalable, so we can go over a thousand transactions per second. There's um, barely any transaction cost, and then there's um, no forking ever. And a little bit about the foundation. So as you know, Algorand itself is a product of research and the foundation is committed to research, innovation, education that's reflected in the ACE program. And the foundation mission wheel consists of four components that are also reflected in the ACE program. For one, um, we do want to collaborate with research partners and developers to advance the protocol and empower innovation. Um, as Hugo already said, um, community and diversity are very important. So we do want to create a community where we have positive networking effects and create synergies among all participants. Um, we do want to create an open and inclusive environment, and that's the same also for the ACE program. We do want to attract a diverse applicant pool, and um, we want to make sure that everybody can participate, gets educated in the blockchain, the cryptocurrency space, and contribute to a borderless economy. And last but not least, we also want to establish um, broad adoption of the protocol and establish significant activity. So let's get into the nitty gritty about the ACE program. Um, Hugo already outlined the objectives of the program. So we don't only want to advance research in the space, but we also really want to support innovation, solving um, real world problems, real world applications, um, create a diverse and inclusive community and workforce in the space um, and promote social impact projects while also enhancing the algorithm platform. Um, a few numbers about the program, in fact. So we launched this program last Thursday as a 10-year initiative with 100 million algos as a holistic um, initiative. We are hoping to fund anywhere between 10 and 15 centers at around $500,000 to $1 million a year um, for three to five years. And the plan is then to expand the program within the 10-year framework. Um, more in-depth information about the actual application process. So all letters of intent and proposals need to be submitted via the submittable platform. It's free to get an account there. And letters of intent are mandatory prerequisites for um, the process. So if you want to submit a proposal, you are required to submit a letter of intent. However, if you submit a letter of intent and you later decide you don't want to submit a proposal, it's totally fine. Um, I want to draw your attention to our program website and the resources section. So if you go to the program website and you scroll down to the bottom right, we um, put a lot of tools for you guys together in terms of instructions and templates. Um, you can see the full terms and conditions of the program, as well as our extensive FAQ that we update um, very regularly with you guys' questions. So please do check that page frequently because there will be updates and um, also give the request for proposals a thorough read along with the terms and conditions that'll answer most of your questions. In terms of timing, letters of intent are due November 12th, which is coming around really quickly. As I said before, the letter of intent is required um, to participate. And the letter of intent is just for our internal planning purposes, so we will not be able to provide feedback on individual letters. Um, we have a template on the webpage that explains to you what you need to include in the letter of intent. But um, in broad strokes, we're looking for information about the PI, um, what you're working on as part of your ACE or what you're planning to work on, as well as um, the amount of funding you'll need ballpark for the whole project. Or you'll think you need a ballpark number and the number of funding years. Um, proposals are due in mid-January. However, before that, in early December, we'll do an applicant workshop where we'll invite everybody who submitted an LOI to come together and we'll go through the proposal structure and answer any questions you may have. So that'll be a very useful event. Please mark that in your calendar. Um, proposals are due mid-January and then we'll have our um, review go through January and February. So we have a reviewer committee that consists of internal and external reviewers coming from all sorts of backgrounds and fields to um, judge the proposals. And please take a look at um, the um, request for proposals that lists the review criteria in detail. 
and um, decisions will be made in March of next year, and then the ACES will launch in April 2022. That way, the ACES will have a sufficient time to get the project kicked off and get started before the summer. Um, now we'll get into the um, Q&A. You can see the questions tab on the right. So if you have questions that I'm not answering throughout the next slide, please do add them here. Um, please also take a look at the FAQ. So some of these questions have been asked to us um, via the registration for the webinar and others were asked early in the webinar um, that we did at 4 p.m. UK time. So we just included them as well because they were frequently asked. Um, the first question we received quite um, a lot was what type of organization is eligible to apply? So we allow higher education institutions and nonprofit research organizations to apply. Um, but as Hugo mentioned in his introduction, education and student focused work is very important um, for the program. So we do encourage nonprofit research organizations to partner with universities because they're um, close to the stakeholders of students and um, also are the experts in education. Second question, what do we need to include in the letter of intent? Um, the LOI, I just outlined this, so we really just look for um, an idea of what you're planning to work on, the information about the PI, the total amount of funding you think you'll need ballpark, and the number of funding years. Um, again, the letters of intent are just for planning purposes, so we can't give you any individual feedback and they shouldn't exceed two pages. So if you go on our program page, click on the resources section in the bottom right, you'll see an example and some clear instructions. Um, a question that we receive often is if multiple organizations can submit one collaborative proposal together and the answer is yes, and we actually welcome that. So if multiple um, organizations would like to collaborate or co-lead an ACE, please do so. Just be sure that um, the group of organizations that wants to work together also submits just one letter of intent and not uh, multiple letters of intent. Question number four, is there a limit in how many um, organizations can participate in one ACE proposal? There is not, so we don't have a set number of how many um, organizations can be in a multi-institution proposal. Um, can for-profit organizations be part of an proposal? And the answer is no, so for-profit um, organizations are not eligible to apply. However, if there's a performer on your team who is affiliated with a for-profit organization, that is not a problem. Question number six, is there a limit on how many individuals can be part of an ACE team? There is not. This is really, you know, how many people do you need to make the ideas that you outlined in your proposal happen. So there's no um, firm number of this because we believe this is very tailored to um, the type of work you're planning to do. So we don't want to give an exact number. Um, in terms of reporting, question number seven, um, we do require a mid-year summary that includes a short written summary as well as a um, short video that goes over what's been happening at the A's, what you're working on. Um, and then once per year, there will also be an annual report that will include um, financial reporting. In addition, we'll do an annual um, required PI meeting that we will organize and fund. And then um, ACES should also include some budget for ACE-related travel, and it's listed in our budget template in the resources section where um, the ACEs should budget for travel to, let's say, another ACE performance event. Question eight also often asks, is physical space required for the ACE? Um, it is not per se required, but we do um, encourage the use of physical space just because it's really helpful to build community and to build roots in the campus you're working on. Um, our definition of physical space though is, you know, it doesn't have to be a whole building or a specific room. It could be, for example, also a shared workspace or the use of event space, for example. Question number nine, how can you find collaboration partners for an ACE proposal? <clears throat> 
So we do encourage to, to look for other institutions that you're interested in. And as I said earlier, we are welcoming a multi-institution proposal. So um, please do try to find um, other institutions or performers that you would like to work with. And another very important question um, is, what's the payment currency for the ACE grant? So um, we can pay, we expect the budgets to be in fiat, but we can pay the grant out either in ALGO or in fiat. Um, I know some universities have um, trouble or depending on which jurisdiction you reside, you are unable to receive ALGOs. So we can work with you um, on this. And um, again, the budget itself needs to be in fiat. And if you do choose um, or are eligible to receive ALGOs, um, you will be paid the 30 day um, average. And again, a quick point to our FAQ page, please give it a thorough read, lots of helpful information on there. And then if you do have questions about um, the program that are not answered in the FAQ, please do send us an email at um, ace at Algorand Foundation. Um, yeah, please do add some questions here to the question tab. Um, so Alexandra is asking, can initial training of professors be part of the ACE program? Does not enough expertise in our ecosystem? Um, I see Talas replying already. <coughs> so um, we are aware that a lot of um, ACEs are interested in. Oh, Tal, did you want to say something? OK. Um, are interested in um, also getting their faculty up to speed. So that is something that um, can be included in the ACE. Um, Dragan asked a question about the institutional overhead. So we favor um, low indirect cost proposals and our policy is that 20% um, is the max of indirect cost. And we also have uh, many costs that need to be excluded from indirect cost charges, such as for example, um, participant travel or support for undergraduate research experience that's also listed in the um, FAQ. Let's see, does anyone else have any questions? Mariana? Oh. Yeah, um, Mariana is asking if the higher education institution does not have any experience in research yet, but would like to begin with ACE, is it eligible? Um, yes, I mean, we're hoping for PIs that are uh, knowledgeable in the field and established, but, you know, depending on your, your ideas, um, that could be um, possible. P Peter is asking, can research institutes within the university apply on their own? Um, and I see who was already replying, but uh, yes, th they can. We just can accept only one proposal per organization. Um, so only no performer can be identical on same proposals from different um, institutions, but team members like subs could be um, part of the same institution. Anyone else has any questions? Now is your time. Please also yeah. feel free to post a topic. If there's anything else you would like to hear more of, please put it in the questions tab and we can get to it. I'll give you a minute. Yeah, so um, I can see Hugo's response to Peter about research institutes. So he underlined that education side is very important. And so you, you should team up with people who um, are knowledgeable in that area. Adriana, hi, Adriana. Um, We're looking for nonprofit research organizations um, in terms of Ariana's questions about the AOs. Um, Jim's question, when you say organization, do you mean the university or a school or department within university? So when I refer to um, one proposal per organization, I mean the whole school. But remember what I said earlier that, um, for example, if a, a university A works together with 
um, university B as a sub and they're working together with, let's say the computer science um, department only, that is fine because the subs can be, we can have multiple subs at the same institution, but we can't have two PIs from the same institution. Um, Sean asks, are there any focuses on what kind of research, for example, computer science versus fuzzing versus DeFi versus applications of blockchains? So we, um, we don't want to exclude any research interests. Um, we don't want to include uh, or create any bias. We are open to, to all um, fields. Alexandra is asking, can the training for faculty needs to come only from Algorand? It can it be offered by other institutions as well? Um, that's pretty specific. Um, we are not requiring that the, the Algorand training for the faculty is coming from Algorand, but we obviously do have the resources and have lots of training sessions um, and information available that could be used. Jim Short, can a government agency be a partner um, we will get back to you on that. Anyone else has a question? Okay, Jim, I'm writing your questions, question down, and I'll get you an answer. Thank you. Just looking over in the chat, making sure. Okay. So again, if any more questions come up, please do reach out via the email address listed above. And um, I also want to tell you a little bit about how you can connect with our community. So um, I want to draw your attention to our Algorand Grants program that we're still continuing to run. Um, we're still continuing with the university program and um, take a look at that when you get a chance. Please also join the Algorand community um, and the developer community and our portal for developers. And um, yeah, get in touch with us on Discord and Twitter and Reddit um, <clears throat> on all the social channels. We'd love to hear from you. Um, yeah, just give us a, a shout out there. And yeah, that's it from our end. Thank you so much. Um, if you have any more questions, email us at ace at algorand.foundation. I just see one more question from Venkat. Um, what is the scope for an individual working professional to be part of an ACE program. So the only higher education organizations and nonprofit research organizations are able to apply. So if you can be affiliated with either, you know, type of organization, um, you could contribute to an ACE proposal. Okay, just checking one more time. I haven't forgotten anybody. Good, thank you, um, Autumn, for posting our email again. Hi, Zach. Hi, Andriana. All right, thanks so much for um, so many of you for coming today. Um, this will be, is recorded and we'll have the recording in your inbox um, shortly after this, um, along with the slide deck that will be emailed out later. Um, yeah, so nice to see you all here tonight. And um, yeah. Keep the questions coming. We look forward to hearing uh, about all the great projects you'll be submitting. Thank you very much.